Yeah. Remember I put it. Have you got, do you want a drink? Oh, thank you, Mother. Oh, you're welcome. Good morning. It is Monday, although we all keep thinking it is Sunday. What? Literally about to take all my clothes off to get You're dressed. Fully dressed. Well, I wasn't about to be. <laughs> get up, woman. I'll go into my mum's room where it's nice and bright. Yes, it's Monday. We all keep thinking it's Sunday because Dan's off work today. He's taken today, tomorrow, and Wednesday off. Um, I'm doing work on Wednesday, but I think it's very much going to depend. I've got all bits sticking up on my head. Just realised now I've started filming that my hair is dishevelled. I'm about to do a, a hair treatment later today. I'm going to treat myself to. Um, yeah, anyway, distracted by my hair. Yeah, it's Monday. And yes, I'm doing work on Wednesday, though. It very much depends on how I am feeling. I will talk to you a little bit more about what's happening uh, with that later we're just packing up ready to go i know that i seem to constantly be wearing my blue jumper that's because it goes it's, i bought it purposely way too big and it fits really nicely over a t-shirt and i'm just wearing leggings at the moment uh, because i'm having pouch issues j pouch issues which i will explain more um it's just nice to wear something comfy and not too restrictive so the blue jumper is my favorite at the moment and for those that ask, it's from Sainsbury's. They do them in other colours as well, but I just really like the royal blue. Okay, let's get going and I'll talk to you properly in a bit once I've got the camera on a tripod and it's not hurting my arm to hold it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am now at home. I haven't really filmed anything much today. We came home, I've had a bath. Uh, Lily has been doing her nails, which I'll show you in a bit because they look amazing. She's done Halloween nails. She does them herself. Uh, Phoebe's got a couple of friends over before they go to football. It's only half past four. I thought it was later than that. It's really kind of dark. Uh, yeah, but it is only about half past four. I've come up to bed because I am, I am struggling and I thought, uh, I also had a few questions about what's going on. So I thought it might be a good time to sort of fill you in what the situation with is with my j pouch because i've had a few questions i will be cutting out coughing because i've still got this annoying cough um and i've made a few notes because i, I do want to get it right what i talk to you about and also it's quite hard to talk about my j pouch in isolation but for you know for the for, for trying to keep it as short as i possibly can I, I will try to do my best but um it really is the result of 16 years of chronic illness which is a whole other story of hospital stays and ambulance rides and surgeries and medication successes and failures <laughs> and the mental toll that that brings with it and it will involve a fair bit of talk about bowels and poo so if that's not your thing or you're a bit squeamish for that kind of thing feel free to skip forward but if you've got young children they'll love it <laughs> Kids all love talking about poo, don't they? So um, yeah, there will be a bit of that, uh, but mainly it's just a little bit of a story about my journey to where I am now, and also just explain what's happening, because it will probably affect a little bit of what's going on for the next few days in October, hopefully only the next few days. And also before I start, and perhaps most importantly to say, is I can only speak from my own personal experience. I cannot speak for any other J Poucher, or any other person living with ulcerative colitis or any form of IBD. Um, and my experience has all been within the UK, within England uh, specifically, and within the NHS. I can't um, talk for anyone else's experience because everybody else's experience will be totally different. I have a very close friend, Charlotte, hi Charlotte, who is, who's been a wonderful friend for 18 years, even though We've lived so far apart for most of it and her experience of j pouch life has been entirely different to mine i'm married to dan um, who also has ulcerative colitis although that is a total coincidence by the way and his experience of ulcerative colitis has been a totally different journey to what i had so i can only tell you my own personal experience okay so i do have my notes on my laptop just here because i don't want to miss anything or get anything wrong so uh, and i also was like oh i don't know I don't know what to include, so I just wrote some notes to remind me. So, first of all, so I can show you what my J pouch looks like, but don't worry, it's nothing squeamish, it's crochet, it's crochet. My friend Lorraine made me my own little 
crochet J pouch. This is what a J pouch looks like. It's made out of the end of your small intestine and it creates, so your small intestine connects here and it creates a pouch like this. Um, that's sealed there, that bit. That's sealed, nothing can go out there. That's connected to your small intestine. And this bit here, the A word is coming up everybody. That's the bit that connects to your anus. Bet you didn't think you were gonna hear that word on the vlog today. So that is what a J pouch looks like. And it's a uh, clever little construction. Very effective design, which allows you basically to poop normally uh, using the same nerves and muscles. Well, it says the same nerves and muscles as you would usually. Um, but I find that actually I use muscles slightly further up in my stomach. Uh, but essentially it means that you poop normally and you go to the bathroom in exactly the same way as everybody else. Sorry if I'm wobbling you, I've got the tripod on the bed. So yes, I have a uh, J pouch as a result of 16 years of chronic illness. I was uh, I first had symptoms at the age of 19. It took a couple of years to diagnose me. Um, and yeah, I had ulcerative colitis for a, a long, long time, all the way through my 20s and into my 30s. And, uh, and ulcerative colitis is an IBD, or in irritable bowel disease, sorry, inflammatory bowel disease, which is very different, well, not very different, but it's a completely different thing to irritable bowel syndrome. So IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, is a, um, is a disease and uh, IBS is a syndrome. Although the two conditions do share many of the same symptoms, but IBD is a disease which can cause destructive inflammation and permanent damage to the intestine. And IBS is a syndrome which does not cause any inflammation and rarely requires hospitalization or surgery. However, I will say that IBS is an extremely debilitating and hard thing to live with. So I'm not trying to diminish it by you know, separating them and explaining the difference. It's a very, very hard thing to live with and it can be really uh, life, it can really affect your quality of life. So, uh, but it's a, it is a different sort of set of, uh, you know, a set of, what am I trying to say? It has defined symptoms and it is a very different thing to inflammatory bowel disease. For example, IBS can be triggered by, they, they know that there are certain triggers, like someone might have had food poisoning or bout of gastroenteritis, or some people find that stress can make their symptoms worse, whereas they don't know what causes inflammatory bowel disease. It's an autoimmune disease, which means that your own immune system starts attacking the cells of your body, um, healthy cells of your body, thinking it's foreign to your body. So in the case of bolstered colitis, it means that your immune system attacks, attacks your, the cells of your bowel, which causes ulcers and inflammation. It's also, I should mention, not hereditary, but it does run in families. My mum has Crohn's disease. Um, but when I've had conversations with my consultant about it, where I worry obviously about the girls with both Dan and I having it, he says just let them live their lives, look after them and worry about it if it happens. But there's no reason that they should um, get it any more than anybody else. So my consultant's pretty awesome. <laughs> He's a bit of a dude. <laughs> So the good thing about the J pouch is when I had my bowel removed, so I had to have my bowel removed because I had total pan colitis, which means it affected every single last bit of my bowel and it had become totally unresponsive to any medications. Uh, nothing worked anymore. I'd also was having obviously regular uh, flexi-sigmoid, sorry, flexi-sigmoid oscopies and colonoscopies which were revealing uh, a worrying amount of precancerous cells as well and I got to the stage where I actually was finding it very hard to leave the house. I'd had Phoebe, she was about 18 months old at this point, yeah about 18 months old and you know I'd, I'd had her as a baby, I was really unwell, I was on a lot of medication, I spent a lot of time breastfeeding on the toilet, <laughs> it was that kind of, it, it affected every single aspect of my whole life. It was extremely difficult. Um, so I had the choice to have elective J pouch surgery basically before I got to the stage where I was so ill that it would have to be emergency surgery. And they prefer you obviously to be as well as you possibly can be when you have the surgery because it makes recovery um, easier. I had a fantastic surgeon, but I did have open surgery. I didn't have keyhole surgery. So I do have um, very, a lot of scars. 
um, yeah, a lot of scars, let's just say that. And on the whole, the last 11 years have been fantastic. My experience of having a J pouch has been brilliant. Literally, I had my surgery and then I had a few months where I had an external ileostomy and a bag. They were awful. My ileostomy was um, recessed and those few months were agony, absolute agony. I had raw stomach stuff pouring onto my skin and yeah, it was very hard to do anything. Um, so they brought forward my second surgery because I had, I had healed so well. They brought forward my second surgery and I had it earlier than people normally would because I was struggling so much. Um, and they reconnected everything back, back up and I was able to use the J pouch. And I think I was in hospital that time for about a week after the second surgery. Had a few complications afterwards of dehydration, but honestly within a week of getting out of hospital, I took the kids ice skating and it just... It not only saved my life, but it changed my life, and I've never really looked back. It utterly changed my life. Uh, so back to my little J pouch and its construction. Because the output in my uh, bowel, so by output we mean poop, but we're going to say output, output because it's a bit of a nicer expression. It has to travel a much shorter distance because it doesn't have a colon to pass through anymore because I don't have one. So it does mean that the output is um, a lot more watery, it's not formed and I also, it, that also means that I don't reabsorb water um, in the way that people with a colon do. So hydration is a really important issue. I tend to drink around two to three litres a day. You will often see me with a a uh, pint of squash on the go and uh, yeah it's important to stay hydrated and then if my pouch is a bit iffy so a few people have asked questions about gluten and so on or if certain foods might trigger it so the only thing my pouch doesn't really like is red wine which is fine I can live without that and uh, pineapple but when I say it doesn't like it it's just a bit irritating and not it's not like a hugely terrible thing so like I wouldn't eat pineapple at lunchtime at work because I'd have a bit of a miserable afternoon but I'd eat it at lunchtime on a Sunday at home and I didn't have to be anywhere um, but then you know I can take or leave pineapple as well as red wine so it's fine and I, I otherwise just eat a really normal healthy berry diet but when my pouch does play up a little bit like around my period or you know just sometimes I've had small instances a bit like when you might have feel a bit off or have a bit of an upset tummy the best thing to eat is starchy foods like white bread um potatoes bananas which i absolutely hate but i eat them because they're so good not only for output but also because they have potassium which is brilliant for hydration white rice and that kind of thing the kind of thing you would think wouldn't be healthy is great for sort of thickening up out output and making things a bit better when you're feeling a bit under the weather and uh, also marshmallows they are great. I love marshmallows for that, but excessive sugar, not so great. I know. Um, so I can't have too many of those. So what's happening now? So I had a routine pouchoscopy earlier in the year, during April vlogs, I think I went for it. And uh, basically, if you've ever had a flexi sigmoidoscopy, it's almost exactly the same as that. They just put the flexi sig camera into the pouch to have a look around. And the great thing about it is I don't have to do any of that horrible prep that you have to do before a colonoscopy or anything, because there's nothing to do. Uh, you know, it's easy to go if you just don't eat for a bit and or they'll give you an enema to empty it out. And it's all very easy. And it revealed during that uh, pouchoscopy that I had inflammation, a small amount of inflammation within the pouch, but I wasn't symptomatic. I had no problems at all. So there was no real urgency around it. And to be honest, I didn't really think about it at all. Nothing really happened. I played voicemail tag a little bit with the IBD nurse, but she never really managed to get hold of me. So I emailed her last night, um, and said, right, I'm symptomatic, I'm struggling. And she called me back before 9.30 this morning. She was straight on the phone. She's gonna to talk to my consultant tomorrow and hopefully tomorrow at some point I will hear from her and find out that I have a prescription for short-term medication like antibiotics, which should help make me feel better. And I've also been referred to the specialist team at Guy's and St. Thomas's as well. If you can hear, the, can you hear them giggling? They're making a cake. It's like the worst possible thing. Like they're just like destroying my kitchen or covering it in flour. Better be a nice cake. Can you hear that ringing? Can you hear that? So that ringing is the fish and chip van. 
we have a fish and chip van that goes round on a Monday or Tuesday and it rings the bell and it means the fish and chip van's here. It's a bit like an ice cream van, but with fish and chips. <laughs> it's a bit early though, isn't it? Five o'clock. If it was Friday maybe, but five o'clock for fish and chips, a bit early. So pouch arthritis is actually not that uncommon. Some people suffer with it from the get-go. I've just been really, really lucky to not really have been troubled by it at all. But my friend Charlotte, who I mentioned earlier, my lovely friend Charlotte, who's been watching the vlogs, uh, messaged me uh, last night and said, um, whatever you do, don't blame yourself. Pouchitis is nothing you've done. It's just one of those things that we have to deal with. And um, I think she said 50% of J pouches will get um, pouchitis at some point in the 50, uh, in the first 15 years. So she said, you know, don't, don't worry. It's nothing you've done. It's nothing I've eaten or anything like that. Um, it's just one of those things that's happened. And luckily, my, I have a really good team. I've got the nurse and my consultant and everyone that have sprung into action. And I feel very, very fortunate to have the NHS, as I'm sure many, many of us living in this country do. One last thing to say is that because of my UC, my ulcerative colitis journey, which I will, I know I keep saying this, but I will make a proper video about one day, just in case putting it out there helps someone find out a bit of information. Because of that, I have quite, I've always had quite an interesting relationship with my body and my thoughts about it and my hang-ups about it or my satisfaction with it revolve primarily around the health of it and the fitness of it and the sort of the things it can do. You, you hear me talking a lot on these uh, vlogs about how much I love walking and particularly love walking long distances. You've seen us do long distance coastal walks and I love that because I can do it, my body can do it and there was so long in my life where that would have been a total impossibility and the feeling of being able to accomplish that is just the best feeling in the world. I've spent a lot of time resenting my stupid faulty immune system, but also a lot of time marvelling at its resilience, my body's resilience to deal with things. Uh, so I think in the words of Tim Minchin in his song, Not Perfect, where he says about his body, if you haven't heard it, by the way, I'll link it underneath. It's an amazing song. And what he says is, and the weirdest thing about it is, I spend so much time hating it, but it never says a bad word about me. I just love that. So I hope that explains a little bit about what's going on at the moment. And I just want to say thank you for asking. A few people had asked about it and said, I hope you don't mind. It's a very personal question, but I honestly don't mind talking about it because I would have loved to find a YouTube video back when I was 19 years old or anything, any type of information that explained it, um, how it was or anything. I was just hungry for that information. So I don't mind talking about it at all. I've had a few comments asking um, and I do try to reply to them and pass on the information I know. So yeah, if you do have questions, I'm more than happy um, about osteocolitis and the J-pouch. I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, yeah, but like I say, that's my experience. And I'm sure other people have different experiences, but I bet they don't have a crochet J-pouch. <laughs> Lilia does her own nails. These are all um, gels, aren't they? So they'll yeah. last. Look, she's got little hearts and a ghosty and a spider web and a pumpkin. Your little hearts and little Oh, well. they look so good. And the, even the ones you had to do with your left hand look good. Yeah, this face is a bit dishevelled. I might get you to do mine. I do and look, Lilia's middle finger on her right hand. Oh. <gasps> what? I had chocolate on me. <laughs> they made chocolate cake and I was just picking at it. Look, show your middle finger. Or the bump. Look. We have the same bump. And Phoebe has it too. Where is it? Where is I that bump? I don't know. I don't know, Cindy Lou Who. What is the bump? <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. This is me. In the future. Kind of. If you can hear crunching, Dan's eating a bowl of cereal in the background. So I filmed my vlog yesterday and then I put the camera down and I just didn't pick it up again. Um, yeah, I think my mind was just on other things. So I'm just popping in now to say thank you so much for watching. Sorry if it was a bit of an unusual uh, vlog to sort of just spend time talking 
about the J pouch, I just had so many questions and messages and emails about it that I thought I wanted a place to refer people back to. And seeing as I was feeling a bit grotty and nothing else was happening, um, it seemed like a good time to do it. So I hope it was interesting. Normal service will resume tomorrow as we are going pumpkin picking. And in fact, future me is about to go and get dressed and ready to do that. So I will see you tomorrow for day 24 and some pumpkin picking in rural Kent. See you then.